Hey peeps, it's Sophie here from Disrupt Tutoring and as always, it's such a pleasure to join you. Today we're dealing with the 2018 grade 12 physical science paper and this is a question on electrostatics. It says, three small identical metal spheres, P, S and T, on insulated stands are initially neutral. They are then charged to carry charges of minus 15 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs, Q coulombs and plus 2 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs as shown. The charged spheres are brought together so that all three spheres touch each other at the same time and are then separated. The charge on each sphere after the separation is minus 3 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs. Okay, so the first thing to note is that when three charged spheres are brought together and then separated, all three receive the same charge and it's an average of all the original charges. So we can use that to calculate the charge on Q, the charge of Q. So we can do that by saying Q net is equal to QP plus Q plus QT over 3. And that becomes minus 3 times 10 to the minus 9 because that is Q net is equal to QP, which is um, minus 15 times 10 to the minus 9, and then that Q, which we need to solve for, and QT is 2 times 10 to the minus 9, all over 3. Okay, and if we put that into our calculator, we can find Q, so the original charge before they touched, is 4 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs. Okay. So 7.2 says, determine the electric field pattern associated with the charged spheres S and T after they are separated and return to their original positions. So remember, after they're separated, which means they both have a charge of minus 3 times 10 to the minus 9. So they're both negative. And there are two things about this. So first of all, they're both negative, so they repel. And secondly, that they're both negatively charged, which means that the electric field goes into the point charge. So I'm just going to draw some electric field lines here, just for each side. And then it goes into them, like so. And then they can't touch but they start repelling each other, which you can see here, if I draw all of them. So they can never touch, first of all, and you can see here that they are repelling each other like this. Okay, then 7.3 says, state Coulomb's law in words, and that's with a bunch of extra information, which we'll go into in the next, well, we'll read it now. Okay, it says the spheres, each with new charge of minus 3 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs are now placed at points on the x and y axis as shown on the diagram with sphere p at the origin. State Coulomb's law. Okay, so I've written there in the yellow sticky note that Coulomb's law states that the electrostatic force exerted by one point charge on another is directly proportional to the product of the charge magnitudes and inversely proportional to the squared distance between them. Okay, and we'll use that to calculate some of the rest of the, of the, the questions. Okay, so the next question says, I'm going to go to the new slide. It says, calculate the magnitude of the net electrostatic force acting on sphere P. Okay, so what's happening to, to sphere P is that there's a force exerted on it by T and there's an ex a force exerted on it by S. And that'll cause some sort of resultant force between them. But we're going to work them out separately for now. And then we're going to add them together using Pythag later. So that's a 4. Okay. So let's first do the force of S on P. Okay. And that is just K, which is 9 times 10 to the 9. Times the charge on S, and that is minus 3 times 10 to the minus 9. Oh, sorry, you're not actually supposed to put this minus there because it's a magnitude. That's a very important thing. To the minus 9. Okay, they've both got the same charge and they're both magnitudes, so they don't get their minuses. 
and the distance between them squared is 0 0.1, okay, squared. So that gives you an answer of 8.1 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons. And now because they repel each other, these two are minus, which means they repel each other, which means the overall force on P is going to be downwards. Because they repel, P is going to move downwards, that force. Okay, so now we can do the same thing for the force exerted by T on P. Okay, so that is K again, 9 times 10 to the 9, and then 3 times 10 to the minus 9, remember no negative because it's a magnitude, 3 times 10 to the minus 9 as well, now that's the force of T, well the, the electrostatic force, the, the charge on T, and then the distance between them is 0 0.3 squared. And that gives you an answer of 9 times 10 to the minus 6, to the minus 7, sorry. And that is Newton's. And because they're repelling again, T, P is going to be pushed to the left. Because remember, this is the overall force on P. So now to get your resultant or net electro, the electric field, um, electrostatic force, um, that you can do by Pythag, and you can just say F S P squared plus F P T squared, and that gives you the resultant force of 8.15 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons. Okay, that is the, the net electrostatic force acting on sphere P. Question 7.5 says, calculate the magnitude of the net electric field at the origin due to charges S and T. Okay, so we know that the electric field is equal to the force over some charge. Okay. And we know that the charges on all of them are the same, and we know the charge at P is minus 3 times 10 to the minus 9. So, if we want a net electric field strength, or an ele electric field resultant, then we can use the net resultant force and the charge at point P. So... This is the resultant force on point P, and this is the charge at point P. So we can, we can use all of our previous information. And that has been 8.15 times 10 to the minus 6 over the charge. And remember, this is a magnitude, so you also don't need the actual sign. And then you get a total electric field the net electric field of 2.72 times 10 to the 3 newtons per coulomb. Okay, and then 7.6 says one of the charged spheres, P and T, experienced a very small increase in mass after it was charged initially. Which sphere, P or T, experiences this very small increase in mass? And so this happens whenever two spheres are brought together in that there's a there's an exchange of electrons and that causes an overall change in mass so it could we're going to go with sphere p it could be both but we're going to go with sphere p for now okay and then it says calculate the increase in mass by the sphere in question 7.6.1 okay so we've gone with sphere p which means we should calculate everything with respect to sphere p okay so then we can use the formula the number of electrons which we can use to then calculate the mass gained later is equal to the charge over the charge on an electron and we know that the charge on sphere p is minus 15 times 10 to the minus 9 and we know that the charge on an electron 
is minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. And that gives you the number of electrons which is transferred, which is 9.38 times 10 to the 10 electrons. Okay. Then we can use that in this formula. So we know that the mass gained is equal to the number of electrons times the mass of an electron because number times the mass gives you the total mass. So we know that that is 9.38 times 10 to the 10 electrons times the mass of an electron, which is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. And that gives you a total of 8.55 times 10 to the negative 20 kilograms. So that's how much mass is transferred into sphere P when they're both brought together. Okay, so that's all for this video. But before I go, I'd like to say a very special thank you to our Epic sponsor for making this video possible. You can read all about them in the description below. Also be sure to visit our website for more of these Epic tutorial videos. And if you can't find the answer to your question, you can send us the question and we'll respond with a personalized video just for you. But until the next time, stay Epic.